Let's call the meeting order at 631 and a half, 632, call it. Uh, any additions to the agenda? Nothing yeah, there? I, yeah, I have, an, I have an addition. Um, during maybe Michelle's financial report, I'd like to give the um, select board uh, just an update on what um, what Gina, Michelle, and I are up to with our investments and potential treasury or CD investments, just a, a little blurb where we're at. Okay. Well, we'll get that in there. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I have a little bit of discussion of um, things to do in posting the minutes, but we can take that up under uh, other business town administrator report. And Gene and I talked about it. Okay. I'll make a note. Okay. Review of minutes, May 15th. Thorough as usual. I, um, I have uh, one edit that I just noticed. I yeah. left our chair off of the select board and I went to talk. So it's all right with you. I will add them. You left me off. I did. I You're in other parts of the minutes, but just not yeah, in but the minutes. Was this when he was here? <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Chair Gardner asked. Yes. Yep. Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's a let's that's add an him. omission that yes. you were absent from the previous meeting. Exactly. You copy and paste. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. I right. did it with the planning commission also. In that yeah. 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 Copy and paste is well, I guess we'll into the next time. But next time, <laughs> yeah. next time yeah. if you like it. In, in, okay. insur I insurrection. The insurrection. In, insurrection. Maybe there's a coup that we don't know about. Yes. I, I have an amendment for the first sentence of the consideration of cemetery sex, sexton position, mm -hmm. etc. cetera. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, I think everything there is probably accurate in terms of representing what was said at the meeting, but after a conversation with a townsperson, I would like to um, omit certain um, parts of it just to make it uh, easier to conform to everybody's recollection of what happened. And I've got this ready to email to you, Deidre, so you don't have to take notes if everybody is okay. Um, simply say, Mr. Boucher explained that six or seven years ago, Mr. Morse hired Mr. Lanson and Mr. Lanson's son to assist with the Sexton's duties. So Great. wait on that same sense, Lampson, it's L A M. That's what I thought too. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And the other further on is paperwork and in paperwork is together. It's in yep. a fifth line down. Yep. So just yep. to get that corrected. It is Lampson. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So if everyone says okay with that, I'll press send. Send it to Deidre. We'll find the. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, anything else? You want me to make a motion that we accept with accept the, uh, the, the, the the May fifteenth minutes? Why are you still reading them? Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And yeah. probably have other amendments. No, no. Oh, you don't. No, no I, 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 I sense that he was done. Oh, yeah. very good. Yeah, you, good sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 <It is. laughs> Anybody else have any comments on the minutes? No. We can still discuss it. Yeah, I know that. You, so you made the motion. I'll second it. Okay. Any further discussion? <laughs> That's what you should do. Uh, not hearing any further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have. They do have. So the motion was to accept the meeting minutes with with the uh, recommended amendments. Okay. Wow. Wow. Um, the next thing on the agenda is. Our public comment. We have any public? Nope. Okay. The next thing we have to discuss board work session to discuss municipal coordinator interview questions, potential executive session. Does anybody want to go into executive session? Sure. Sure. I move to go into executive session with all the usual language that that motion entails about uh, conforming to Vermont statutes. 
I'll we'll second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Is uh, okay. We're out of executive session. So we would like to. What do you want to say? I would like to move that we uh, offer the candidates the position of a municipal coordinator and uh, direct the town administrator to take further necessary steps. I'll second that motion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Oh, the next thing on our agenda is discussion on county road celebrations. I think you're up on the docket, so to speak. Great. Yeah. Hey, Larry. Hey, everybody. I'm Larry Gilbert. Um, I live on County Road. And I'm here again to ask you to close County Road on second Sunday of four upcoming months so pedestrians and bikers can be out on the road enjoying enjoying car free and environment. Um, I assume there are some new select board members on the, yes. So if you like for just for their sake, I can sort of do a quick review of how we got to this point. Is can, that, we a, can we ask the new select board members to introduce themselves to you? Hi, Scott Hess. Can you see me? My screen went blank. I may have to just log back on and off, but. Yeah, you look okay. great. I can't see fun. Anyway, okay. Hi. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Hi. Is everything all caught up? Is someone else speaking? No, go ahead. Hi, I'm Zoe Christensen. I'm also new. And I can't see. Do well, you want me to oh. move? You can sit here. Uh, yeah, that'll probably be a better view. Yeah. Better view. Yeah. It's, it's, it's there we go. Okay, so we'll fill in the new members on previous history. So, um, I will very be very fast, Seth. So, um, I, I know um, we've done this before. Well, yeah. Um, in uh, last November, the county road paving project was completed. At that time, I came to the select board and asked for permission to close the road from the junction of Center Road and County Road to the junction of uh, Templeton Road and County Road. And the select board agreed uh, agreed to do that. Um, uh, uh, so on one Sunday, uh, about 200 people or so came out and enjoyed walking and biking and rollerblading and roller skiing along, along the road. And during the course of that, several of them said, hey, are you gonna do this again? So a small group of people who were excited about it got together, uh, came up with a proposal, came back to the select board and said, hey, can we do this uh, a few more times uh, this, this year? The select board said um, they had two major concerns. One was um, a concern about liability, that an independent group kind of acting completely without any um, attachment to to the town was it was a concern that that made sense um, and suggested that if we could solve that problem they might the board might consider the issue again so um, we went to the East Montpelier Recreation Committee uh, told them about it and asked them to take us under their wing um, and be a quote unquote subcommittee of the rec committee uh, they agreed to do that. I don't know if anybody from the rec committee is here to know. Um, they agreed to do that, um, even though their main focus is youth sports, but they thought that this fit vaguely within the purview of promoting recreation within the town of East Montpelier. So um, uh, as members, not really of, of the rec committee, um, 
uh, it is our understanding now that the town of East Montpelier's liability coverage will cover any activities that go on um, uh, in in the in the county road closure situation. And I think Carl may be able to speak to that more than I, because I know he's had some conversations with the League of Cities and Towns. So um, that was one objection, which I believe we have addressed and overcome. Um, the other objection that we heard was um, complaints from a, a number of residents who thought that the that it was not a good idea. Um, some of those complaints, in my opinion, um, were a little unfounded simply because several people said, um, I'm going to, you're going to trap me in my house. I can't get out. I can't drive on County Road. That's not true. It's only through traffic that would be, uh, the road would be closed to local traffic could, could come and go. Uh, additionally, some people talked about um, emergency vehicles not being able to get a, get to a, a house if necessary, not to a, a, um, the barricades are simply very removable and any emergency vehicle could go through at any time. Um, so uh, with that, I would simply ask you to reconsider this again, uh, based on the fact that I think we've solved the liability issue. Um, I know there are going to be some people who will continue to object to it. Uh, I know there are a lot of people who have been in touch with me informally saying they would like to continue, uh, like us to continue trying to, to get this to happen. Um, the motivation, my motivation is simply um, the interest of building community. Um, we live in a crazy time of political, uh, I, uh, political division, uh, sickness kind of disease pushes us apart. We have uh, uh, isolation and insulation um, from each other. And I believe this is an opportunity to for East Montpelier in a very risk-free way to promote bringing people together in a very positive and fun environment. And uh, the, what we're specifically asking for is to close the road slightly different than what we did the first time. So it would be from Barnes Road and County Road to uh, Templeton and County Road. So a two mile stretch as opposed to a three mile stretch. There are reasons for that. I'm happy to talk about those if you want. Um, four Sundays, second Sunday of July, August, September and October. Um, it's an experiment, I believe one with very little risk very high potential reward. And I hope you'll consider voting in favor of this. Happy to answer questions. And I can follow up with the, uh, just relaying a little bit more about my conversation with Larry Smith of the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, the passive, uh, basically our insurance agents. Uh, and uh, he had already communicated at the time that we had our previous discussion about this, that uh, in order uh, for them to be comfortable with it, it either needed to be a town sponsored event or an outside organization with their own insurance. And what I uh, was able to clarify with him was if it is a town sponsored event, uh, and we talked explicitly about the rec board taking it uh, under their responsibility, uh, then the current liability insurance that the town has would, would cover it. And he is also um, willing to give flagger training to the volunteers and uh, the road crew would like to take part in that. Uh, other municipal officers, if constables have need for uh, flagger training, I don't know, uh, then he's willing to provide it to, to everyone at the same time. I have one question, which is who is the contact when, if, people start calling the town office. Who can we refer calls to? Because similar with other rec board activities, we do not field any inquiries in this office related to any other sporting events or anything else the rec board does. Right. So I want to ensure that this does not become something that we're then having to field phone calls about. So I want to know right. who I can direct people to reach out to. And the select board asked me to be the liaison to this group. And I indicated that I was willing to, to take those calls. Uh, there, there is a little bit of a catch now because of the timing of, of this decision. Then I'm going to be out of town for a while after a week from tonight. 
So uh, for the next well, week, you'll be phone, phone accessible, no? Um, I'll be in a different time zone. So, so who would also, need a backup? Karen, yeah. Karen Choppy from okay. the Rec Committee has, has raised her hand and said she wants to be a part of uh, uh, making, okay. this, making this happen. And but is I someone told, going I told to the, select, the Rec Committee that uh, wanted to make it clear that this was a select board decision uh, if we make this decision and that we are um, you know, by no means forcing them to do it. Uh, that I don't want them to take any heat, or if they take heat, I want them to be able to deflect it back at us, because we're the ones who are making the decision to go forward with it. Because my concern is when I polled residents, approximately 80% were against this idea. So oh. I'm going to guess that if this is approved tonight, mm -hmm. it will prompt some response. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I just want to make sure I'm not feeling this. <laughs> yeah, I know. So It's a tough one. Yeah. Who's going to coordinate with the with the uh, sheriff's department if that's necessary? Is that, is we that contacted we'll the sheriff's to be be in town. Mm -hmm. It would probably be last year was with the state police. Yeah, this year the sheriffs are in town. Mm -hmm. The sheriff would probably be here that want at least that day. Yeah. Want. Do you want? Do you want me? I made that call. I just state would police, prefer to not be involved in this. At yeah. All. That this is, I really don't, just like with the last one, I don't want to be involved in this yeah. one. I simply do not have time. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll make that call in, in the next week. Well, let's take a poll of the select board members. What do you think, John, since you're sitting right here? Oh, I'm not in favor of it right now. So, no. so yeah. What's your concern? I just don't think the road should be closed down. But I wouldn't, I, I might be willing to agree to do it one month to see how I know the time to see how it worked out, but I don't want to uh, agree to doing like five or six months in a row. People are going to go crazy over this. Yeah, I, the okay. potential maybe they won't, but I just, I just, uh, I just think there's people you know who were who were against it when we sent out. Was it an email we sent out? Was it? I put a post on front porch form and asked people to either call right. or email me. And I think the result, it was, it was around 80, 20, 20 in favor and 80 of those. I can't remember how many. I, think, I didn't yeah, think, I think it was closer to 70. You reported it at the time, but it, it could have been changed. 70, 30. It, so, still with that majority right, of people yeah. were opposed. And so, I received very lengthy emails in opposition. So we, and we represent, you know, we represent everyone in town and um and but i do i, I do understand that um you know this this would be under the town's liability so the town still would be liable if something happened our insurance would be would mm -hmm. take the hit for that yeah um i feel better that you folks would be willing to take the tra flag or training so you show so you're a little more comfortable a little more aware of what your rights are and what your what the issues are working in the roadway and not working, but you would be technically working because you'd be there. Um, but I, I'm still not sure doing it yet. I'm going to ask uh, Zoe. Yeah, I def I'm definitely interested in the idea of finding ways to, you know, foster more community involvement, especially given these times when it's difficult to find ways to do so inside, um, in, like you said, across po political lines and everything, I think is a you know approving more than one month without really. I I, have, I didn't know how the the first event how that actually worked out, and I think it would be um good to see how um like it, how it would function with trained flaggers, and I'm I, I guess I can't really envision how it would work for the people that really want to get out of their houses and um, use the road while maintaining part of the road. Um, staying, I guess what I'm saying is like, I really like the idea, but again, approving maybe five or six all at once, it, I think it'd be good to see how it would work out one time. And if people that are displeased with the idea, if they would be mollified somewhat, if it worked out better. Yeah. Scott? Um, you. Can you hear me? Good? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, yeah, I spoke to a resident at length who's very much in favor of it right on the route. I like the idea. Um, I'd be more comfortable with a July and September this year. Um, I, I think we should go forward with it. Um, it was extremely successful. I know it was, it was unique and it was a festival last time because it had never been done before. 
Um, doing it four months in a row, and if the wheel kind of falls off the first month or two, is it then you have to cancel? But I, I am definitely in favor of of going forward with this at least at least two months, certainly at a minimum two months. And I maybe that July September would work or July and August. But yes, I, I am I am in favor of 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 trying it out to some degree. Once again, little reservations maybe on four in a row, but um, yeah, I, I I'm very much in favor. Ah. So I like the idea. You said the right things. It's fostering community in these times is important. Um, I wouldn't approve four times in a row. And I'm worried about the 80 or 70% of the residents that disapproved, that didn't want to shut. I'm worried about that. As John said, we try to represent everybody. So I'm on the fence. Um, if I did vote in favor of it, I would vote for a one-time occasion, and I would then open it up to the general public and get an accurate idea of who approved and who disapproved, because we do represent the whole town. So that's kind of my stance on it, is I could give tentative approval to once, and I would take a flavor of the community after that. So that's that's where I'm at on it. Yourself? Well, I didn't really ask you, and I am. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so as I said last time, uh, how, I asked myself, how do I as a select board member respond to an idea that has very strong proponents that we heard from last time, people who, including one person who lives on the route who um, was resistant to it and scared to let her grandkids go out on the road and then was delighted when she got out there. Uh, um, and then some people who are, are quite opposed to it. And I, uh, like Larry, I read some of the comments in opposition and, and realized that they were not opposed to the proposal that was being made. They were opposed to some, some other idea that was not being proposed, like closing it off to all traffic, uh, regardless of whether it was emergency vehicle or people who were living there. Uh, what, um, what happened in November, as I understand it, and what's being proposed now is, is different from that, and, and it gives people flexibility. It has uh, minimum impact on traffic because of the time that is being chosen, 9 to 12 on a Sunday, um, at a time that people are up and about and, and doing stuff. Uh, it's hard for me to think of another time during the week that you'd have less impact on the traffic. And um, it's, uh, I forget your numbers, but it's like two minutes of uh, extra travel time for you found going around. Uh, six, six minutes. Not, six minutes, two miles. Two miles yeah. farther okay. to drive. Yeah, okay. Two minutes. There's no way. That's a okay. three mile per hour paved road. <laughs> yeah. It's going to take longer yeah. than that to go south yeah. road. Okay. <laughs> okay. So six minutes of extra travel time. Yeah. And um, I've also seen that um, in other settings where there's been a change from, say, a road that's uh, uh, for cars to a pedestrian road, it's been resisted in the past. and. And then when it happens and people resist, the same people resist it going back the other way if it's proposed to, to turn into cars. So this is something new. And I think it is something that um, that probably people will like if we give it a chance. So I, I would like to give it a chance. And we have uh, we have the, the rec committee who's uh, who's willing to help out with it. Uh, we've got some additional institutional um, commitment behind it. Um, are you willing to support the multiple times? I, I would like to, yeah. I think that uh, it takes time for something like this to build, for people to become aware of it. You know, it might be rained out once or twice, and it's it's not fair to try to judge something based on you know, 30 people turning out when it's pouring rain or 10 people turning out when it's pouring rain. Mm -hmm. um, there should be some way that this is advertised to folks to explain exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And it should probably be on a front porch forum or maybe mm -hmm. some other outlet somewhere. Yeah. And, and, because and, obviously people aren't understanding it. Um, then we're not, the, the message isn't getting out. Today. Yeah. And, and you, you know what, uh, even though I'll be in a different time zone, I can, I, I don't have to take calls exactly when they come in. I can return the calls at a time that's convenient. So well, I, you've, I, got, you've got backup in the I, board anyway. I can continue yeah. to, yeah, to be the well, you person. can. Yeah. 
So I just like one one. What's that, Zoe? Oh, sorry. I was just going to ask if it seems to you like most of the resistance is coming from a misunderstanding that the road would be completely blocked off as opposed to having access to those who live there. The calls I got were they were just not positive about shutting the road. Well, I think one thing that may there help is when you do communicate, explain how emergency vehicles get through, how yeah. is someone going to right. get yeah. through the how does that work? I would personally be very concerned removing the roadblock and driving through that a five-year-old is going to be on a bike yeah. immediately right. out, out of my view. Of At what speed are they going to be trying? So I just think it would be helpful if you answer those questions mm -hmm. for people as well. Mm -hmm. That That's at least what I was hearing a lot in the comments that I got is, you know, and, and that to me, I can't picture what that looks like. If I lived on County Road and I needed to get through, or frankly, you're probably going to have someone that just says, I just want to drive through. Yeah. Right. And, you know, if the road theoretically is open, I mean, you could have a belligerent person that says, I'm, I want, I live in Callis and I want to drive the length. Cause I heard from Callis people as well. Right. I want to drive, drive the length of the road. What does that look like? And mm -hmm. I, I am still not understanding what it means that people can get through. Is, right. is the that, county going to lead? What did that look like in, in November? Were there residents who wanted to drive to or from their homes? Uh, yes, there definitely there definitely were. Um, there were people who came out of their driveways um, and and um, I think immediately realized that there was something going going on and and everybody was driving very very slowly and very cautiously and there were people who came to the barricades at at each end and said, "Hey, can I get through?" And I said, "Absolutely, yeah. Just watch out. There's a lot of people." out and about and, and again they they drove um respectfully that we had the state trooper at at one end and i think that that sort of calmed things uh calm traffic a, a little bit and so if the sheriffs are around that's excellent they placed cones cones down the center of the stretch you know all the way along which made it um uh you, you know at least visual a visual awareness and so i i didn't hear of anybody having any issues with cars and, and i'm not saying that can't happen of course uh, of course anything could happen but um i think i think the risk is minimal and to your point john i think absolutely communicating broadly on front porch forum and i'd also like to send them a, uh, a mailing out to all the people who live on that stretch of the road so they actually have something physical in their hands to 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 look at not everybody's on front porch forum so um, right yeah. sorry um, and one of the means that we had last year of communicating this to people was we still had in place those flashing highway signs that were communicating about the road closures for the, the construction oh, that was from, yeah. and we uh repro somebody reprogrammed those so that they talked about the closure so that we don't have this time so yeah. i think going the extra mile of actually mailing people who live along the route uh, would be be a big help so I, I'm still for the one-time conditional approval. I'm, I'm not saying we don't have to do the, wouldn't do the four times. I'm just saying one time and then take the flavor basically of the townspeople. Because I'm, I'm, I'm nervous about approving something that 70 or 80% of the people, uh, you know, there's a, some pushback, a fair amount of pushback. So I know there's a lot of approval or people that um, approve of closing the road, but there's also a lot of people that aren't. So that so that just be oh, sorry, okay. sorry. I just I was just wondering if some of the um pushback might be mitigated prior to the first event, if there is going to be an event, um, just by a clear communication to those um saying beforehand, this is how you will get out of your home or into yeah. your home. Yeah, um, we want this is this is how so people will have an understanding will have how it will work beforehand, they might be less um, likely to resist it. And, and also, if you have a poll where 70 or 80 percent of the people are against it, it's usually those that are in opposition are the ones that raise their hand and make and make a lot of noise. So if you're in favor, have, usually you don't open your mouth because it's it's OK. So I don't know how accurate that is. Yeah. Like the loudest voice in the room isn't always the most accurate measure. Yeah, exactly. All the time. Yeah. So I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd like to suggest or recommend a, a approval of, of four with the caveat, Seth, and I completely believe this, that that if the first one or the second one if it is a disaster, if people are screaming bloody murder, I'm not here to create a, a, a ruckus and, and, and a division in the town. I'm here to try to create 
uh, cohesiveness. And so, and so right. if that's what we're doing is creating divisiveness, then I'm out, you know, I'm done. We'll just cancel the last two uh, or three, you know, I yeah. mean, if the first one is so right. people are so up at arms, then, then I'm, I'm, I'm with you on, on okay. that. I do think, as Carl mentioned, there's value in saying we're going to do this four times because somebody go, oh, well, I'm not around in July, but I am around in August yeah, or September yeah. or something. And so so yeah. being able to plan for it and advertise it and, and have it as have it have some gravity as opposed to oh, it's a one off thing. And, uh, mm-hmm. um, you know, mm-hmm. and then. I mean, how many times do you want me to to see me here? Anyhow, <laughs> <laughs> not that often. <laughs> I do a bracelet, though. I'll have to give you that. <laughs> so, so the four time proposal would be the second Sunday in July, August, September, and October. Is right. that right? That's what I. Yeah, that's okay. your proposal. Okay, and the the original proposal back in January was Six. starting in um in June, June and through November. Through November. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh huh. And there would be no there would be no rain dates if if. If it's raining on that day, then that's it for the month, right? Right. Correct. Okay. Fair enough. I, I, I'm comfortable with that, actually. We need the rain. <laughs> just on yeah. Sunday. <laughs> oh, right. The day before. Start the day day for me. Yeah. <laughs> First Sunday. Yeah. Can you affect when it rains? <laughs> it, Absolutely. No oh, problem. then we need to talk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hmm. Well, I'm in favor, I'm in favor of that. Yeah. Is there some other way to measure public support after the first event? I think that we'll probably get reaction. You know, we're going to have to deal with it in some way. Said the first reaction didn't really mean much, so I don't really know what we would do to gauge reaction. Then. Well, people call us. That's what happens to me. But, you know, as Scott said, and I guess we've made the point is, you do get negative reaction, but it's, that's not really the consensus. It's people that are negative. And they call you and you get 10 people to call, but what about 90 people that approved? You know, they're not calling you to say, oh, it was a wonderful time. The people are going to call you are the ones that are, oh, I can't stand that. What did you, why did you do that? I think the 200 people who are out there enjoying it. You're right. That they they're, not, something. they're not necessarily calling you saying, oh, we had a wonderful time. Keep yeah. doing it. It's, it is a hard thing That's to get. What I mean. it's, yeah. You know, it's like I'm not sure how. I mean, I've noticed this at a meeting when you have a meeting like this, and you have one person come in, they're screaming at you, and you think it's everything's bad. Well, that's only one person out of the 2,500. The other 2,500 are fine, but they're not going to come in and say they're fine. It's the person that's upset that's going to come in and scream at you. So you always have to be aware of of who you're listening to. And just to let Zoe and Scott know, for the first one, we heard from no one. No okay. negative, no comments whatsoever. It was only when it was oh, right. the, all right. The feedback only came when I actually asked yeah. people to reach out to me about this proposal to right. the same one that essentially was presented tonight from January. I guess, I guess I'd go along with it somewhat, you know. Uh, and, 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 and as I said, I, I, I hate to use that word that strongly, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I, it's a positive thing. I think you're making a good case. Um, I like what you say. I am a little bit nervous about it. Just not the safety point so much. I think you've covered that pretty well. It's just that the negative reaction I've gotten from some residents makes me feel like, eh, hope we're doing the right thing here. That's, which, that's which, which, which is funny, Seth, because I'm I'm on the opposite. I'm two and zero on people reaching out to me. Two, two, yeah. <laughs> two people who live on County Road, love it, and are in favor of it. <laughs> yeah, it could be though that your p- political persuasion is 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 a little different than mine is I interact with different people than you do. I mean, it's true. You know, Carl, different people will call Carl, different people call John, different people call me. Mm -hmm. It is true. It's that we wear our political persuasions on our clothes, in in our faces, and on our hands. So that's what happens with the people that approach you, is people approach you because you're a different person. Yeah. So that's a lot of, I mean, I know a lot of people who were complaining about it. Yes. Thinking that. Right. For me, it's a hard decision to approve it. It is for me too. It is for me too. So, but and you I, know, I, I think that with the caveat that you would react to us or to townspeople if it was a, a bad experience for a lot of people, uh, I think that you are sensitive enough to to present that to us 
that you may say, well, I'll rethink this because you're, you're, you're also taking the flavor of what's happening. So, um, so if it didn't go me well. Mechanically, how, how would that work? So if we held uh, the first event on, yes. on July 9, yeah. uh, you would have a select board meeting uh, what, on the fifth, somewhere around the 15th. There's well, another, actually have one meeting in July. Right. July 24. 20, 24th. Yeah. So, so we could, I could come to your July 24th meeting yeah. and report and maybe some of you will right. attend the thing you're know, coming out and, and ride your bike. Actually, I'm right. not that worried about a personal experience that I would have there. I know I'd it, enjoy it. It's, it's the idea of seeing the other people, seeing the two, yeah, yeah. 200 other people. No, no, I understand time, that, so. that. I understand it. it's the people that um, I try to represent in the town that I, that I don't want to make them feel they're not being heard and that um that they have concerns so 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 my question then though seth is 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 if we have an event yes on july 9 yes and you have a meeting on july 24 yeah um what happens in between i mean our um our i don't know gina's not going to do this maybe carl's going to do it well carl uh, solicit, solicit on front porch forum hey we just had this event uh, what'd you think please let the select board know because we need to know if i, I don't think that's a bad on. idea i think that's a good idea i do too I, i'd like to take the flavor okay. of the I mean, townspeople I, some way uh, to and, see their reaction to that event okay that's I, that's fine i'm 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 yeah. all for that i'm all for that i mean i'm not and, trying to be a hard ass about it I'm no and, and like i like i said if if enough people hate it then i don't want to continue right so yeah so i think that we beat the issue to death pretty much as our usual way <laughs> so i think we would we'll probably entertain a motion so how how does this sound and I'm not making a motion. I'm asking for feedback on a motion. Okay. Um, yeah. I move to give revocable authorization for four celebrations closing County Road on a two-mile stretch from Barnes Road to Templeton Road on the second Sunday of each month from July through October 2023, 9 a.m. to noon, with the select board receiving a report on each event at the first meeting afterwards. Needs to be massaged to say who we're giving revocable. I guess it's the rec board. You know, we're giving revocable authorization to officially. Yeah, so, that sounds right. So that way, um, the would, only would happen. They would come in. They would right. report, and, and we would right. The, 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 I mean, is it? Do we need a report after every event? I mean, I would think that we would get the I'm after the first one. Yeah, I don't okay. think we need a report after every event. That's you don't need to do that. I don't want to see that. Often. <laughs> <laughs> if we if we don't have a report and then after the second one there's a big uproar then we'll have then we'll have to we'll have to address it i think yeah. if there's an uproar we're probably going to know it we don't know exactly what you we don't need to report that, the that's, uproar that's my, point. <laughs> that's my point yeah all right so i'll second carl's motion well let, let, let me I, I revised it based on the feedback it now says I move to give revocable authorization to the Recreation Board for four celebrations closing County Road on the two mile stretch from Barnes Road to Templeton Road on the second Sunday of each month from July through October 9 a.m. to noon with the Select Board receiving a report on the first meeting after the July event. Or, or do we want to say, is there a possibility that if the weather looks horrible uh, the day before that you'd say, hey, let's cancel it for this month? And so we should say the first report after the first event. Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, Carl, in, in your in your motion, are you giving the rec board the authority? Uh, yeah, I did. Somebody, somebody, the town is the way we've been discussing this, the town is taking this on as their own project, our own project, rather than having an outside group come in with their insurance. And so no, the select no, board, the no, select no. board needs to authorize somebody to do it. And the recreation board has said, yeah, we could we can take this under our wing. Okay. But we can instruct this the select board, we can we can instruct the rec board after the first event yeah. that is canceled. Obviously. Right, right. I, okay. I uh, what yeah, and just as further background, I mean, there were some questions uh, from the recreation board saying, basically, are you guys on the select board going to force us to do this? 
And uh, my answer was, no, you're a volunteer committee. And if you don't, if you don't want to take this on, then, then that's fine. We can't force you to do it. We wouldn't want to force you to do it. Uh, but yeah, we can certainly, uh, according to the language of the motion, we can certainly revoke the authorization to do it. Okay. Okay. I understand. We even, when I was in, in Hardwood, we would, we had first Fridays. Um, so the first Friday of every month through the summer and into, into September, um, we had this whole town-wide, village-wide get together where you'd have vendors out on the sidewalks and you'd have, we'd have music on in a couple different venues yeah. and um, there would just be hundreds of people there. And we wanted to close down the main drag going through there, but you can't. This is the only one. You yeah. couldn't get trucks to go around all these other turns and everything, so yeah. we didn't do that. But we had looked at doing that too, mm -hmm. uh, and never we didn't get that far. But, mm -hmm. So I understand kind of where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. And Randolph does close down their main drag. I was about to say for, for the New World Festival, but they do have a way. Of yeah, not totally right. Way of going right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So do we have a motion? Yeah, so the one I just read. And who second it? Zoe. Scott? No, Zoe. Zoe, Zoe second the motion. Oh, I, did. Did. I uh, thought it was Scott. I thought it was Scott. Go ahead. I think it's me too. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 You refrain? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I'm I, saying Yeah. You want to say nay? It's all the same, isn't it? No. Mm -hmm. Saying is different than saying that. I'm going to say no. You're going to say Okay. Yeah, so four. I'm not going to make any difference. The four, um, four of us said aye and one person abstained. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for coming you. in. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you for your good spirit. Well, I Thank hope yeah. it's going to be an asset to the community. That's well, my, that's that's my, that's that's my goal. That's so, a great concept. So, yeah. so yeah. I will be in touch with you about getting in touch with the insurance people yeah. and um, and uh, also about communication on this. So very good. All right. Thank Thank you. You. I will email you the motion. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Oh, the next item on the agenda. We're running a little bit late, but we had a good discussion. Consideration of cemetery services contract. Sure. Yes, sir. Hey, so we had yes. Would you like to come to the table? Uh, sure, we'll do that. Well, you'll yeah, it's fine. Uh, okay. So uh, apparently, uh, the, the town's attorney has looked at the contract, has made suggestions. Uh, it's been ag agreed upon by by young James here, and uh, so we're James prepared to uh, ratify it. Yeah. Oh, do I owe you an email? Was there a question? Well, the only thing we did not was what the term was. Yeah. So the contract editor is the date. That's going to be the date to the end into it. But what the term would be, I wasn't sure what it put there. And and I I had the conversation with James and and I um I you were agreeable to the to, yeah. to what you had suggested. Yeah. June sixth to December thirty first. Yeah, I right. picked the six, assuming that if we're right. contract out. Uh, right. Gonna, right. Yes. We could we could get it all signed up by tomorrow. But just so the select board knows, this is a template Jim Barlow actually sent me um, a yeah. template that I then took what James had written and kind of married the two together. And then we went back and forth with just a couple changes that we that we tweaked. And, um, and, and this is where we are. And Zoe and Scott, uh, if you don't know, uh, Jim Barlow is an attorney that we use for most of our legal questions. He's someone who used to work for the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and he uh, provides excellent advice to us. Thank you, Carl. Was there any observations of Memorial Day in the cemeteries? I don't know if anyone drove by the cemeteries and saw how they looked. No, no, should, should they were lovely. Yeah, yeah, good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. They were great. Yeah. yeah. I think Rosie commented the same. She told me that they looked great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is Jim Barlow approved. And um, so remind me, please, of how much of the responsibilities formerly held by the sexton would be encompassed by this contract? I would dare say all of them. Yeah, I'd say yeah. I'll do it. Okay. So I understand he, that he, he may have questions as they come up and he can uh, certainly come to, to the board with that with okay. those, but I 
primarily day-to-day -day stuff will be on James and to handle it. So. Okay, so I understand there are a lot of phone calls that the Sexton yeah, see. Right. You're prepared to handle that. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I take care of rolling corners, so I'm right. dealt with them. So, yeah. All right. Okay. So well, all I, I have to do is, oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I, I just must say that uh, maybe I said it last time too, but uh, I'm, I'm impressed that a 17-year-old <laughs> is taking on this level of responsibility, not only for uh, willing to do so for East Montpelier, but uh, for so many other towns. And, um, you know, I know John knows the importance of, uh, of um, you know, long time work in the, the industry. And uh, I'm not sure if industry is the right word. Yeah, I'm not sure. And um, I'm confident with you having grown up in, in the field uh, that uh, you'll be able to do a good job for this for us. Well, thank you. Thank you. I got a question on the corner post. Yes. Um, are you talking about the corner post on a grave site? Yes. The like you know, the four corner posts usually mark out what the person. Yeah. Now, usually we had this discussion last year. They used to be granted. You know, what are they now? Um, so before James uh, last, well, when when I agreed to take over Elliot's yes spot yeah setting grant markers are, are clunky at best it's, it's difficult to get them square um right now and uh, right so right now we're using actually aluminum or like a cast aluminum uh state with a, the initial on it oh uh, so the reason before that is the easier to put in you can get them square you measure by measuring get them down below the lawnmower get them down below so you're just the pushing them to the ground <laughs> you're at, it's a long stake pushing oh. the ground and if they do get sunk into the ground you can find them with a metal detector that's and it's all oh. it's a common way of doing it. Yeah. Um, the yeah. granite stakes or the granite corner posts, um, sometimes they get lost, they sink into the ground, you gotta you know dig them out and find them. I like the granite post. Well, that's good. For the old old that's not yeah. the same. I'm a traditional system. Yeah. I have that's... wooden fiberboards on my house. Yeah. That's wrong with that. That's wood's good, but vinyl's better. better. That doesn't, uh, anyway. that doesn't mean we can't use them, but uh, if yeah. I'm putting them in, I'm not going to pull around granite. And, and the other thing, but what if what if someone said they wanted them? By all means, oh, okay. yeah. but the, the the challenge there is is getting a, a granite uh, um, monument company to make them. Yeah, and they're getting more and more difficult. No, there's no grant company out there that enjoys making corner posts. There's no money in it. It takes yeah. you know a lot. Got to make four cuts, five cuts, six cuts. Each time, and, yeah. and they're not happy doing it. They kind of roll their eyes every time that happens. So this is this is sort of direction. And you might have the same last like a letter in it. Yeah. That's usually what they are. They have a letter. They yeah, do. that's oh, yeah. a lot of work. Yeah. So what? They a lot of work going at it. Too. Enough for it. <laughs> right. okay. So the way it is. I didn't realize that was going to shit. Huh? Oh, they do. Yeah. No. So yeah. they know. Kind of know. Yeah. They don't like. Yeah, that. but uh, it was done for years. And I like them, but that's okay. I just wonder what the deal was now. Yeah. yeah. Aluminum. Crafty aluminum. Hey, Seth, Ro hey, Seth, Rosie has a question. There's a question. Rosie has Rosie. a question. Rosie. Oh, Rosie. Hi there, guys. Um, I just wanted Hi. to mention uh, regarding the corner markers that yeah. Elliot was waiting between four to six months for each set last year. Um, yeah. It's if They're really taking a long time to get, and they're not prioritized. Um, in the monument industry at all. So what what he had said when he, the committee had talked about moving to the aluminum was that we can still, obviously if somebody still wants the granite markers, they're welcome to make those arrangements themselves yeah. and to get them, you know, along with Sexton to get those installed. However, um, they're responsible for the, for the, for, ordering them for paying for them and for paying for the installation. That's good. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> It'd be pretty costly too, I bet. Everything's costly these days. I think it was 240 or something last month when yeah. I bought those. But anyway. Yeah. Um on the monument foundation. So that's something that you do. Yeah, I mark out the plot and just measure where they want the foundation and dig it and pull the cement myself. Oh, okay. and then All right. probably have somebody else come set the stone because obviously I can't pick one of those suckers up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. right. Probably the granite company would come set it. Well, that's well somebody did. Yeah. yeah. All right. And at the end of the day, I guess this is going to cost the town less money than we were paying before a little bit. Yeah. 
and you'll and you'll job. and you'll un, uh, you realize a revenue stream uh, larger than what you had before. And we're going to have to do some of the mowers, right? So we have like, two. We have two mowers. You have some mowers, right? Yeah. So you have to decide what you want to do with right. them and sell them, or I don't know, should be able to sell them down. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. And um, how how will James's work be overseen by the committee? Right. I would, I would, right, Rosie. Wouldn't you say by the committee? But who's on the committee now? Me, Rosie, uh, Emily Goya, yeah. Mark Lane. Mark Lane. Oh, okay. Um, but, and but the Lamsons are gone. No, Tim is Tim is staying on until the end of the season. On the committee. He'll call. Correct. Correct. He's not talking. Oh, okay. Correct. Okay. okay. Correct. And right. um, who's the chair of the committee? Uh, uh, my, um, Tim is the chair right now. Tim is the chair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. And Elliot has. He's walked away from this. He walked away. Yeah. yeah. Some hard feelings. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I would guess. Yeah. But. Oh, I don't know what he wanted, and you know, by giving up half half the job, I couldn't necessarily do it forever. And and, uh, and this is a kind of a fine way of doing it. Um, yeah. So. yeah, I'm I'm going to probably ought to send him a letter or something. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. going to propose yeah, a letter would be fine. I, yeah. I was going to propose that we, um, I think we said some some kind words about his work last time, but uh, that we actually pass a motion thanking him for his long work on yeah. uh, the cemetery yeah. solution mission. Yeah. Yeah. We should send him a letter too. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't think I have any other questions. We're going to, and this is going to run from when to when. Is it a year or what are we doing? It will conclude at uh, December 31st. Yeah, we're running it through December 31st. Okay. And the start date is whatever we're really still at today. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, so we don't have much call in the winter for anything? Occasionally someone might call and want, you know, the answer no, no, the answer your question no. And we usually, uh, you know, leave the cemetery open kind of weather dependent at a certain point. It just it doesn't make a lot of sense to open you do more damage than yeah. what it's worth. And so yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. You want to make a motion to approve the contract? Any, Joe, you have any questions, Scott? No, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. So I'll make a motion to approve the uh, cemetery services contract between the town of Lee's Montpelier and JM Yard Services LLC to maintain cemeteries um, in the town of East Montpelier. Um, and that, um, that the select board authorize the town administrator to sign the contract. Okay. Yep. Give me a second. I second the motion. Ooh, you second the motion? Yep. You did? Shall we? Shall we? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Great to have it. They do have it. Congratulations. Welcome aboard. board. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. Right. Yeah. Um, is it time to address like the openings on the board on the, on the, on the cemetery committee? Uh, no, we can do it not that. Well, we can. Next month or the next meeting yeah. is when a lot of your appointments will be happening. Oh, for so it? okay. Now you have someone? Moment. I do. Uh, um, Pam Byron. Okay. Um, yeah, she, and so she expressed some interest. In great, that'd be good. So be great. Shall I have her draw write a letter to? If, if you know, she could just shoot me an email, you got it. Perfect. You got it. Yeah, we'll we'll be great. talk to her about that. She'd be good. Yeah. And yeah. Um, was there the other the other? Um, Thing that with James's new contract is is the price structure. Yeah. Um, I think I developed that. Yeah. Do we need to approve that here or is that with the, within the committee? Oh, that's a good question. Right. Did you know in the past how the pricing structure was approved? Has the select board approved that? With this contract. We never we modify the contest. I never remember approving the price structure. Well, it's, it's the Contract, the up. contract is a relationship between us and yeah. your company. The price structure is a relationship between the town and we use in the cemetery. Precisely. Correct. That's right. Rosie? The last time that the prices changed was when the cemetery committee was still a commission that was elected. And now it's not. Right. So my understanding at this point would be to change price pricing structure would be up to the select board and not to the committee. Mm -hmm. Right. I think you're right. That makes sense. So did we agree to that pricing structure? Did we have problems with it? Well, I remember I never get increases in some areas. There were some. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. For sure. But those are some that kind of 
kind of the same as they are all around here anyway. It's yeah. it's definitely in line with the rest of the cemetery right. for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, it's doubled the price of the plots, right? I don't, I don't, I don't have it for Yeah, it's got kind of something like that. I'm just going by my memory. They weren't that. They weren't. They weren't. They were pretty inexpensive. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Fourteen hundred bucks. And it looked, yeah. Now it's twenty eight hundred. Yeah. That's a big. That's worth four. Yeah. I know. I mean, it's a town we resource and two. I bought four. Price. That's <laughs> it's, it's a town resource, and I, I think we should be charging people the fair market price for using a town resource. And it's coveted. It's what it's coveted. Covered, that, yeah, um, Doty Cemetery. Everyone wants. Lots of people want to go there. Mm. Eventually, eventually, not yeah. not today. Yeah, not tomorrow, yeah. but eventually. <laughs> <laughs> long, 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 long time from now. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. 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 So, yeah. But we don't really have. I mean, it's it's a little sloppy way of doing business when you don't have the price sheet in front of you. You're not comparing. No, we had we had it though. Last we time. did that. We had it last time. We don't have it this time. Yeah. Do we I, do we need to do that tonight? Uh, do you want to look at it at the next meeting? Yeah, let's just look at it. I, I feel more comfortable. Let me, um, Gene. Let me get um, that together. I, I mean, you may have it, but uh, let me do it again, and then I'm going to also send you other local cemeteries price lists. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And, and then yeah, look at that. Claymont would be a good one. Claymont, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, until then, the current price or, list is a yeah. donation. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah, so we'll have our next meeting. Okay. Yeah, my dad takes care of yeah. buying more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. so if the word gets out that we're looking at this, we might get a rush on buying plots. Maybe, maybe. I bet we won't. And then last thing, this is more for the committee, but Rosie might be interested. I, I have made movement with the um, surveyor up there, and she has at least laid out the plots in that. In that I love to say. So I'll, I'll get that off, too. Now, we just have plots for sale at Adobe. Um Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, those are all closed. I don't know if it's called closed, but none, none you can buy a plot it. up at the one in Calus. Well, they have a couple left. The one on the little hill there beyond Riverbend Store. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah. that's in Calus. 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 But a lot, well, of well, Calus. a lot of East Montpelier. A lot of East Montpelier. What dead cows? <laughs> don't quote me on wait, that. Wait, a lot of, wait. You're going to be in the newspaper tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for not accepting me, Sam. A lot of East Montpelier are Poplar yeah. Hill. Poplar Cemetery. Yeah, my family's in, in the same Okay, thank you. That's why I wouldn't want to be in Calus. I wouldn't want to leave my family. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> That's enough. Good you. recovery. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're done. Okay. You guys um, are very except, awesome. yeah. except that um, you know, if, if people would like to approve it, I would like to move to thank Elliot Morris for his long service and I'll email to you. Uh, to the town on the cemetery commission, on the cemetery committee, and as Sexton, and to direct the town administrators to convey our thanks to him in a letter. I would like to see that happen. Okay. I, agree. I agree. I agree. A letter written to us. Okay. Is there a second? There a well, second? I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, do have it. Okay. Thank you for coming in. You bet. All right. Appreciate so the, the actual mechanism connect later? Yes. Okay. I will. You got it. Sure. Awesome. Thank you guys. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay. Oh my gosh. Consideration of warrant to impound unlicensed dogs. We got the dog, the dog impounder right here. So that's right. That there's a copy in that staff thing you know, near your nameplate that has a sign. Oh, in here? It. it does have one tweet that's all mentioned prior to the meeting from the one in the packet and is on the website. Oh, okay. Do we just need a motion? Yeah. It's the same thing every year, right? It's been changed in my. We changed group. the uh, language last year yeah. to make it a little more um, politically correct. Yeah, and uh, actually, when Seth mm -hmm. and I first started on the select board, it was directing the animal control officer to track down and kill these animals. Yeah, destroy right. them. Yeah. And that's not politically we, we, I know we did <laughs> last year, the year before. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we just need a motion, I believe. So, Carl, did you want the change that you emailed me? I did, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's the, the, what's the, the, the one? packets is still the old. That version is the new. So. Okay. So what we did last year, if, if I could just see this for yeah. a moment. Um, we, um, uh, we, we changed uh, required in the first 
line to authorized. And then um, what I wanted to do is just make that consistent. And the third line says, you are further authorized to make and return complaint. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so this is the new copy version. Yeah. That you okay. Have there. Yeah. So the next step is to. I make a motion that the select board uh, approves the warrant to the updated updated warrant to impound unlicensed dogs. And I will recuse myself since it's direction to me as animal control officer. Do we have a second? I'll second. So we second it. All those in favor, please say aye. Yeah, I, have, aye. I, have a, I have a question first. Okay, um, for, what, what impounding does it go to the Humane Society? Where is the dog impounded or a wolf hybrid? It doesn't happen, Scott. Okay, then I withdraw my question. <laughs> it could go, it could go to the yeah. society. It could. Some places okay. take it. Yeah, okay. So we, we've had a discussion about that. Yeah, um, it, it's sometimes uh, necessary to impound dogs for other reasons like if they're being mistreated and we Please. do not have facilities for doing that. Uh, that's why I'm at, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, on the fly. But this is a different question. This is a question of impounding them for not being registered. And uh, as, as Rosie said, it, it doesn't happen, uh, but we are- um, You have the ability to do it if you want to. We have the ability to do it if we want to. And under those circumstances, I, I think the Humane Society would take them there yeah. could be adopted. We've talked about putting him in one of my horse trailers or a cow trailer. <laughs> yeah. we've, we've discussed various means of implementing our laws. Yeah, and I, I have taken um, not misbehaving dogs, but uh, stray dogs. I've taken them home and kept them at my residence until I can reunite them with the owner. So there are various ways. Okay. Can... Thank you. So I'll... You can proceed, um, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Four ayes have it, one abstention. And I'll sign it. And I'll pass it around. How's that? Can I have, I have can a you question? Sign? You can sign it. What's the difference in pricing? What's that? The nine dollars versus the thirteen. Uh it's neutered or not neutered. Yeah. No, yeah. Nine. Uh, Nine if they're fixed and 11 if they're in, I'm sorry, 13 if they're not fixed, if they're on time. Wow. When they're late, it's $11 for fixed and 17 for unfixed. And Ooh. Carl, in the past, the constable has also been involved in the possible impounding of dogs. That's who uh, used to handle it rather than the animal control officer. Um. Okay, um, I'm I'm just thinking back to a long period when the constable was also animal control officer. But, uh, uh, sure. So you're not signing this. I'm not we only have two that, signatures. No. So Zoe and um, Scott have to come in and sign it. Yeah. Okay. Until then, I'm not authorized to do nothing. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm going to move on. We're 25 minutes late. Town treasure report. And I guess Scott's going to say something also, right? So with the treasure report, what you have here is a standard report. You see, I just put a note just so you're aware that Michelle is having some challenges with the M&T bank reconciliation. It really it has nothing to do with M&T. The credit card processing company that we use. For some reason, the detail report she runs from the credit card company compared to what she sees coming into NMT do not match. Nope. And it's very odd the way it comes in. They'll bucket transactions and she has no idea which ones, how they bucket. It's not on the day. It's it's very hard to follow. So there is a delay in that. Um, the budget status report is here, but mm -hmm. to be honest with you, it's the, the budget status as of like tomorrow morning is the one we're really focused on. So um, this is, you'll you'll get an update for that at the next next meeting that will be much more informative than- Yeah, because we have to- you. Yes, you will have decisions out. to make at the next meeting. Right, as far as the balance goes, the fund balance, Correct. extra money gets allocated for this and that. If it's Correct. gonna be legal, it has to be allocated now. Correct. Correct. And that's the next meeting. Yes. Okay. So there's no red flags in this no. bunch of paper? No. Okay, thank you. I don't see anything here. 
So I guess we're ready to move on to the um, Scott's um, financial yeah, plan rings. So <laughs> the absconding, the absconding of funds. We're working on that right now. Um, I mentioned to the select board last time that um, we're investigating um, invest investing our funds, um, and Gina and Michelle have done a cash flow um, assessment or a report about what what funds are available um, on a short term on a what what what's our cash flow basically, um, and the three of us. And our representative Northfield are going to meet hopefully next week, um, not this coming week, but the following week when I'm back. I'm in Maryland right now, um, and we're going to sit down with our banker and um, and invest in either CDs or T bills. A small portion of our money is um, is bearing interest, and it's tens of thousands of dollars that um, that can be earned for the town. Um, by going through this procedure, it's you know, with interest rates at at, at five percent and T bills are five and a half percent right now, and and our bank and our banker is very anxious to sit down with us. So we've had a conversation between the three of us trying to set up a date, and as I said, we've we've got the numbers in front of us. Um, this will all be extremely liquid. Um, any of these funds can be sold on a, in in five minutes, and uh, and turned into cash instead of. Uh, guaranteed of T-bills are not guaranteed, but if if they're not redeemable, then we're all out of business. So just wanted to give you an update and hopefully by the next select board meeting, we'll have some numbers and maybe some projections. Happy to okay. answer any questions, but it's pretty straightforward at that at this point. What are the legal um, options for us to invest in as a town? Yeah, we it, it's, in, it's in our policies. Um, Gina, do you have them right offhand, or I do not. I mean, basically, basically, what we're going to be investing in is is insured CDs or treasury bills on, okay. a, on, so a, on a short term basis. Behind my question was more than what's in our policies. I was looking for the broader statutory authority that towns have to invest their money. Uh, but I think that our, our um, policies are at least no more permissive than our statutory authority granted to us by the legislature. I mean, yeah, I mean, right now our money is invested in the bank, some of it in non-interest bearing, un uh, un I, actually uninsured. I assume that if we changed our policy to say that we were going to, on a monthly basis, put some portion of it on number four red and the nearest roulette wheel, that there would be a problem with that. Well, no, that, right, it, 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 there's, there's, a, there's financial policy, I know our own financial policies would yeah. prove, you know, would prohibit us from doing that. Right, but just- But I don't know what they are. I think that's the question I had last time too. Yeah, I mean- What, just, what can we do? I, I, I do, I mean, I was being facetious with the roulette wheel, but it is important to remind ourselves we are a Dillon rule state and uh, we are not allowed to do anything that the state doesn't authorize us to do. So as we contemplate changes in how, where we put, or park our money, then it's important for us to be conscious of what the legislature has authorized us to do. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what it is. No, me neither. Uh, yeah. I was wondering too. I mean, I know that this is a safe investment right. that he's espousing. Yes, I agree. And it makes sense. I mean, I mean well, that we've never done anything like this before. I <laughs> kind of wonder why. Whether it was just well, it, it, it's it's been it's it's I, um, I sit on a couple other boards, and and we are now investing our money instead of sitting at zero interest. It it, it, it bewilders me too. Um, but these investments that we're going to make will will put us in a safer position than we are now. Because we have some some, some accounts are not insured, is what you're saying. Well, you have your money at Northfield Savings Bank, which is insured up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. But we have millions of dollars there. Yeah. If you put them into T bills, in my opinion, they're they're safer than Northfield, which, you know, obviously the government has made good. The Federal Reserve yeah. has, you know, the FDIC has come to the rescue in uh, Silicon Valley Bank, right. but they didn't have to. If, no. if, if Northfield went out of business, theoretically, we're only insured up to $250,000. Right. There's other towns that do it. I, I, and I think if we checked, we'd find out because I do know that Morrisville invests their money. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. We're going to buy T bills. Or CDs and other banks. 
I, I assume that if it's in our policies that we actually do have the statutory authority to do it, but I, I'm just curious about how wide our statutory authority is. Scott, you suppose when you get ready to make a recommendation to us that you can um, maybe work with a League of Cities and Towns or somebody to talk with Jim Barlow. Um, I'm not even sure we have to spend money in consulting with Jim Barlow. That's something that VLCT should be able to help us with. Uh, but to be able to inform us on that. Absolutely. Thank yeah, you. I'd like clarification on that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But thank you, Scott. Sure. No, it, it, it could be, I don't know. I mean, well, it's, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars that will be, that we will be making, that we'll be earning. We appreciate your initiative. Yeah. Our, our pleasure. Gina and Michelle are, are doing the legwork right now. I appreciate their hard work. Okay. Um, so we'll hear more about that in the next meeting. Yes. All right. Um, so that takes you to the time. Hey, 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 quick, a quick question. Um, do you, you do not want us to do, um, basically you don't want us to pull the trigger until we come back to you. Right. I mean, I mean yeah. if, if we, if we get the go ahead, you don't want us to invest T bills, just keep it within Northfield because they don't no. have a lot. Okay. No, we can do the T bills. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. You, it, though. you just can't do it. Right. Right. And we need to know what the statute says as okay. far as investing the municipal funds that are our responsibility. Okay. okay. So you don't want us to make any any investments before the next meeting? Nope. Okay. And, I mean, the, the, the history of the way the select board has worked is when we have a CD that's ready to turn over, then the select board authorizes reinvesting yeah. in that CD. Right. And, and you know, maybe we want to revisit that and give somebody else authorization to move around our investment but the way we do okay. it right now the select board determines where the money is put that's just that's, that's the best way okay yeah no problem that's it. and yeah. the policy actually states a lot of things but in the end it says the following investments will be permitted under this policy certificates of deposit or other evidences of deposit at financial institutions so it's somewhat wide open when you say other evidences of deposit. Right. So and financial institutions, I don't know if there's a term of if that's a term of art or is a casino a financial institution. Yeah, let's, I mean let, I mean that's unless it's silly, let's be practical. Is a is the Federal Reserve or the US government does that come under the auspices of this policy? We don't know. Um, I mean, it's a good, I mean, it's a very vague to yeah. me. It's, yeah. To me, this is yeah. very wide, wide open. Yeah, I agree. Um, I just think we got to dot our eyes across yeah. the T's. Yeah, That's I all. think we're going to get to where you're recommending that we get to, Scott, but we'll want to be careful. Yeah. I think you could argue the National Treasury is a... I know, I know. Okay, I want to move on. I think we need to hear more at the next meeting inserting this investment opportunity. Um, so delinquent tax collector report and policy review. What do we have? So Michelle has provided the report. Current balance is $223,548. Ouch. Compared to the same time last year, 208,121-ish if you round. Um, there have some been some payments that have been received since she ran this report, okay. of course, but um, this is essentially where we stand. You all have a copy of the detailed report that mm -hmm. includes everyone's names. I'm looking. Yeah. Can I, your... I, I, need, I want to, need to ask a question, really, or any question. And I'm going to use a person's name because the person is not alive. So it's not going to impact anything. But David Rogers Estate, um, he's got six properties. Some of those I'm pretty sure sold. And I think there might be, they might be, however they did it, they might very well be, uh, what would you call it, uh, financing it themselves. So we should know that because if it's sold, they're supposed to pay off. This is a link. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, if they didn't, then the person who bought it would be technically, I think, after a certain period of time, going to be liable for the taxes. So, and, and I just, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a young person I know that, I suppose they bought two of those buildings, and uh, I know they just changed the roof on one of them. And I don't think he'd be doing it if he didn't own it. So I'm kind of concerned about that. 
Good yeah, but generally, if they buy it, unless they just got a handshake agreement, do you think that's how it is? I mean, usually, if you buy something, you have a lawyer. Well, you should have a title. There should be a title. There should be a. There should there needs to be a deed. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. thing is, I don't know the situation, but it'd be nice to find out. Right. This has so to do you're with asking the status of the Dave Rogers. Uh, how could this, this not come up in a title search? Well, who knows if they did a title search? See, I don't know. All I know is I know somebody, a young person, has picked up two or three of those buildings. My understanding. Um, I heard just in discussion that some had sold, and yeah. I know some money had come in. So I'm not sure how it connects with okay. these. They're not huge amounts. Each building's not that valuable, yeah. obviously, but they're doing work on them already. So. It should have changed hands. So I don't know what to do. Ask our delinquent tax. I mean, ask our delinquent tax collector to check in with the uh, uh, town clerk. The owner. About, oh yeah, about or, sales and yeah, and the and the and the uh, maybe we'll have to contact the the court or the owner. Well, and usually you would. That's I his mean, wife. That's his, that, yeah, it was his ex. Oh, new one. Yeah. Yeah, kind of new. Yeah. So wait a minute. Has that gone through probate? The whole thing. I don't know anything about it. That's why I brought it. Well, we got to find out. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry. sorry about that. Four years will do. I know. That's why I have the whole list. I just have a few. I have the, yeah, he's got one year, four years old, two. So, two of them. It was in there in some of your papers. Wow. I had the whole list. And there's some other people that are like five years overdue, which I would say they should go to tax sale. I want to see those names. So, I haven't seen them. The I was associated with, they've been in tax sale 10 times by now. Yeah. <laughs> And and how, and how does a bank owe us money? I know it's just from 22, 23, but crazy too. U.S. U.S. Bank. Oh, they might have taken over a property. They would pay up. <laughs> actually, actually, this is the if a bank is the longer they they wait, that's better interest than we can uh, we can uh, get on our own. Yeah, if you get it. Well, a bank. Well, They'll okay. pay. They have to pay it all. Of course. Oh, but anyways, a, I just thought maybe really somehow nice. these liens are slipping between the cracks and because of those, because of fact it was in probate. You don't have to write a lot of stuff. Yeah, I don't have the help looking at this. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I have a question since I'm new to this and Zoe's new to this. I mean, you have 162,000 that's yeah. this year. Oh, oh, I can see them anyway. Uh, Oh, yeah. Does that normally get whittled down quite a bit? Normally, it gets whittled down quite a bit. Is okay. that it? <laughs> <laughs> That's it here. Oh, how'd that get over there? I don't know. You know, you're here just to help you guys out. Oh, get you straight. So we probably ought to pick the ones that are the longest, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, it, doesn't our policy say that after two years we yeah, put them in a tax sale? That's what I would do. Anything after two years, I'd say go the for vast it. majority of the obviously they've been here. So that's one reason I think Michelle's a bit confused as to what the, the practice policy, actually right. has been, because it seems like it hasn't been consistently applied. So that's one difficulty we run into in general. Yeah. When we look at our policies yeah. across the board, a lot of things are not consistently right. applied. So some of the history of this is when Seth and I started on the select board, we had an elected delinquent tax collector uh, who reported to us and um, and acted in office in consultation with oh. us at all times. Uh, she was an independent elected official. Uh, and her approach, which we essentially never objected to, was to make arrangements individually without any particular policy with uh, each of the, the taxpayers who was delinquent. And uh, when we took this on as a town staff function, and uh, we also, I don't remember the exact timing, but we did create a policy, and uh, we, we asked the delinquent tax collectors to follow the policy and we have a number of times gone through the process of saying okay these properties are not um, they're so delinquent we have to uh, put them up for tax sale we worked with a lawyer to 
drop the documents and most of the time once we, we get to that point and start setting out notices and people have paid there have been some where the ownership has been just kind of in limbo and the, this it, there have been problems with the estate and in those circumstances we have not applied the, the policy because we haven't really had a good counterpart to to work with is, is that a fair summary Seth? yeah I mean, the repeat offenders are on this list are the same ones are always here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't want to say names, but uh, so David Rogers owes state is 30,000 is 60,000 of it, roughly. Now, so we need to find out if that's so, still on probate. If it's yeah, so that's the first question I have, because he's the biggest one here, is what's happening to Dave Rogers and his state? And what's the status of that? So, I mean, we can't send out a letter to him and, or his state if it's still in probate. Well, you could ask, you could ask the judge where it's going. I mean, you have a right to know. We have a right to know what's going on. That's right. my question. What's it, going on? And it's been in probate for a few years now, probably three. A couple of three, yeah. Yeah. Do, yeah. Is that the way we do it? We direct a, uh, an inquiry to the judge in the case? I, I don't think so. I don't know. No, I, I, we've never done that before. Well, when we always reach out to someone. I would talk to Barlow about it. Uh, I think that what, what we did before is the delinquent tax collector we had before was working in the office mm -hmm. uh, of the probate, whatever it was. That's where she worked. So we got a report on what was going on as uh -huh. far as this kind of activity. Well, I think we have a right to know. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. So that, that's the first question. Is That's the biggest delinquent tax uh, payer we have. Is David Rogers. And, and figure and, that out. And what I understand is that his new wife is the property owner now. Okay. At this point. So we'll send a letter to him. We need to. But anyway, anyway, there's there's kind of problems with this thing anyway, because it, this this policy here says the satisfactory regular payment agreement in writing is accepted by the collector. So they can you can do an agreement yes. to pay. Yes. And then it says. It's kind of funny. It says down here later that if you that if you under this agreement, if you write a check and the check bounces, then you're you well, you have you've got to pay the cost of the check, so yeah. on and so forth, and the cost of what you know for the for not having insufficient funds. But then it goes on and it says, you know, if if or if an existing agreement has been breached, the town and the town and a tax collector may begin the following actions: conduct a tax sale of the property. I mean, so if, they, if they're supposed to have agreements, and it's not only not only do they not, if their ta if their check doesn't if it bounces, well, you can immediately start a tax sale. This is what this is saying, mm -hmm. and I just think that you know what, you need to start doing tax sales. Well, okay, we've done that in the past, and that usually comes makes people pay the taxes. Mm -hmm. So well, you're not doing them any favors by not. No, I understand. Understand doing that. So why don't we just decide who we're going to send out letters to that we're going to say bring them the tax sale? Anybody with longer than two years. Okay, that's what we need to do. Fine with me. That's fine. I mean, we've yeah. done it before, and we've done it with these repeat, repeat offenders. It's a but They don't have an agreement. And it's we a, and can, who has an agreement? And can we go into tax sale if it's uh, an estate in probate? That's true. I mean, we have to figure that out. Yeah. Uh, so we need to pick out the ones that have been over two years. So would you like to speak with Michelle to go over your history with this or because that's part of it is she needs guidance here. Yeah, she needs um, all the agreement. You know, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah but yeah. unfortunately that hasn't been the case in the past. So it's very difficult to know when we follow policies and when we don't. When both of us have encountered, encountered numerous situations where we are not... We have not followed policy, so. Then there's always a place to start following yeah. oh, policy. I, listen, I, I mean, I, that's why I come to you. I mean, the ML-4 yeah, no, no, was I, an example. You know, that policy has never been followed to do an RFP to take out an ad in the paper. It's not done that way. So it's it's difficult from our perspective to sometimes know okay. where to go. So, so our, our policy here doesn't yeah. say anything about two years. No, it says not made within 60 days of being delinquent. Right. But you can now, do it immediately. Yeah, delinquent is one year. Yeah. It's the two payments right. haven't been made, and then you're delinquent. 19, whatever it is. Yeah. Year. Okay, so why don't we just follow the policy since we have the policy and we need to have a roadmap here. 
Yeah. Let's use our policy. Correct? Right. That works for you? That works for you? Well, just a minute. Let, let me we did ten, <laughs> we did ten, we did ten, ten, see what I'm agreeing to. It's yeah. I mean, it seems like we have a big list here. A lot of money. Yeah. Yes. But there's a but there's a, well that the the whole probate thing with 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 uh, Rogers Rogers is, is a major part of it. Well, sixty thousand. Yeah. So that is one. Yeah. There's only one though. So yeah. So one sticking point here, giving discretion to the delinquent tax collector is, uh, if satisfactory payment arrangements have not been made within sixty right. days of delinquency. Yeah. Et cetera. Et cetera. What are satisfactory payment arrangements? It's not specified here. Well, yeah. just use common sense. You though. Use Someone... the contract that they have to be able to. They have to make payments in the amount large enough to cover their their penalty, their interest, and and to get them up to date before the next year. You're exactly right. I spoke too soon. Further up, it says the payment schedule will, will be calculated. So, we've done that so taxes and arrears will yeah, be paid absolutely. in full prior to the following year's well, main tax payout schedule. I mean, as people do yeah. that, and it worked out fine. Okay, so there, there isn't discretion. Yeah. There. So I don't know. Have do we have any agreements with any of these people? I don't believe so. No. Okay, because that's what we did before. We'd call the people up, we'd send them a letter, and then sometimes there was agreements, and that worked out. You yeah. just send them a letter saying, "Look, sorry, you, you know, you owe us money. You know, you need to talk with us about it. We need to make an agreement. Um, we're going to give you two weeks to come in and talk with us in the office to make the agreement. If you don't, if you're not here within those two weeks, then we're putting your property up for tax sale." Right now, so she, has she sent out a letter every month? Just sending reminder notices. To, to the best of my knowledge, I don't get involved in this process in detail. Right, because I think we sent. So you'd like to talk to her. We sent. Yeah, I mean, uh, she needs Every coaching month, and Dawn some guidance. Send a bill for um, that month. Uh, There's some interest. Do, Don would do. Yeah. yeah, he sent out a letter every month. This Don, well? Don was not your delinquent tax collector, so no, Don was not sending right. out. You're right. It was Bruce. Bruce was your delinquent tax collector. Yeah. Well, I thought Dan Don was sending out the letters. Don was not the delinquent tax collector. I don't believe Don was. Don was your collector of current tax, right. not your delinquent tax collector. Right. Bruce was your delinquent tax collector. Yeah, but as and when I was here, Bruce sent no as treasurer. Bruce sent a standard uh, statement that I've seen Mr. Every sending month? every month. That's okay. that's the, the only time I got to witness it. That was what he was doing. I was in the office with him the day that he was doing them. You could contact another town and get a some or the league and get some boilerplate on uh, ta on tax on uh, tax payment agreements. Michelle has reached out to Jim Barlow. He did respond back with some information. Yeah. Michelle just has a lot on her plate right now, and I think was overwhelmed, and I don't think has fully digested what Jim Barlow has sent. So we. We had agreements. Even our tax collector that was doing it as a percentage of she she took some of the money, right. the eight percent or the interest of one one. Right. Mm -hmm. She she so that was her fee, mm -hmm. and she worked out agreements with a lot of different people. Had Bruce sent any as delinquent tax collector, to the best of your knowledge? Because we we, no, Bruce, we inherited Bruce none. Did have, and took over this position. Bruce did have arrangements with various people. I thought so too. But they, I, I can't tell you details. No, but I know one of them is on this list. Uh, I, don't know, I guess I won't mention any names, but I know that he had agreements and people would come in and make regular payments every month. So he did have that worked out with people. Uh, so that does work. I don't know if she has any documentation of what, if, if, if those were in place, theoretically, then that person wouldn't be on that list. So something. No, but they, they're they on the list now. But, oh, okay. You know, they you cleaned up. Since you, as town administrator, inherited a lot of Bruce's uh, work, his files, is it possible that somewhere in your files? I Michelle? gave Michelle the only information yeah. I had on the oh, right. Okay, so um, we need to clarify the agreement process. And then we need to clarify what happens if they don't enter agreement. Correct? You can sell the property. No, I, I'm with you on is you have to move to a tax sale to force people to pay. Yep. And it does them a favor because they actually have less penalties if they pay their taxes quicker. But I, I know one, huh? I can tell you one of the person, people on this list is three years in arrears, you have to pressure him. Yeah. Well, yeah. the pressure is going to be putting him in tax sale and that's, and then you right. just, so you just direct attorney Barlow to come in here and do the tile searches and set up the liens. And you're supposed to get warrants from the, 
town clerk, and then those warrants are sent forward to the tax to the to the attorney who acts as your tax collector. Yeah, no, we've done. I'm that. just saying that for yeah. Dana's. But but don't you think that we should send a letter out first saying you give them a chance to get the agreement? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, it sounds to me like they've been getting letters every month. Just saying. They've been getting a statement every month, correct? It's not like they don't know they owe them. But tell them if they, they have an opportunity to do an agreement, and if they fail to follow suit with that agreement, then you're probably. I think the first agreement. month that they're in arrears, they should get a letter that says you got to get into an agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because this says that if they don't make satisfactory payment arrangements within 60 days, it says, yeah, then yeah. we have the option to start the tax sale. Yeah. Policy is pretty clear. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what do you need? So I need someone to help coach Michelle through this because I don't know this process. So I okay. can't. I mean, I didn't inherit the delinquent tax that passed to the town treasurer. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's fine. So I can come in with you and we can go over that. And the only thing Bruce went over with her was how to run those statements and send those every month. Okay. There was I think, no information shared about any tax. Okay. Any, well, why don't I just come in? I'll just come in. She, she needs to have the legal yeah. um, background provided to her by our town attorney, who's going to be handling the tax sale mm -hmm. anyway. Does it? The first step, though, is the agreement. Is it, is it thinkable to just make a quick call to the previous delinquent tax collector and say, we're looking for an example of one of these agreements? Where will we find it? That probably would not be overly well received, but yeah. I can give Michelle the number and she could try. Yeah. How about if I, I'll call town Hardwick and get their contract? Yeah, I mean, I don't really know that that's, I think we could make that from scratch. Maybe yeah, that yeah. has so, reached out to a previous finance director that she worked with to gather yeah. some information. Okay. Okay. We did our, we put together our own contract. We had contracts and we had a policy and the policy is pretty much similar to this one. So yeah, probably something from the league eventually. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, but just other towns have contracts already in place. You don't have to reinvent it. Yeah. Yeah, and we've done them before. Lots of them. Lots. So I don't know where the records are and all that, but I know that our previous tax, uh, delinquent tax, you, like, the one that was going in the Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. They might not have been that far. They don't like to get right. involved in... Right. Okay. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. But I can... I'll just call yeah. Casey or Amanda, and they'll send me the contract. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Amanda's... Uh, can't think of her last name now, but she does the uh, delinquent tax collecting for us for the town there. Okay. Okay, so we'll we'll move ahead. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll 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 do that. All right. And we got to find out what's going on with Dave Rogers thing. So, would you have right. would Michelle call the Rogers estate? I believe Michelle has been in communication with them. I just, okay. I don't, again, I don't know yeah. the details of that. Okay. Send her an email, ask her. I'll just come and ask her. Yeah. I'll yeah. come in tomorrow. <laughs> well, the next day. Check with them and find out. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What are we here? Oh, uh, so. Consideration of transfer of funds from general fund to other town funds as budgeted for FY 2023. So these are just essentially journal entries. We need, need to make in the ledger for the budgeted item and items for fiscal 23 for these to actually record the costs in the general fund to then give the money to yeah. these other groups or funds. But you don't need a motion for that, do you? In the past, you've done a motion. Okay, we'll do a motion then. I'll make I'll make it the motion. Okay, you made the motion. <laughs> Do you know what you made the motion for? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, we're transferring money from one place to another place, and Gina oh, said, <laughs> "I didn't take. We did. We thought you were daydreaming over there." No, <laughs> not here. Not. Uh, not here. Do we have a second on that sort of vague motion? I'll second it. Oh, very good. All in favor, please say aye. I, uh, the aye, aye, aye. do have it. Yeah. Are you saying aye? I'm saying aye. He's saying aye. Enough information for the minutes. He's saying aye. 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 Thank you for making that very clear. All right. Okay. Happy to. Great. Um, consideration of municipal energy resilience program MERC mini grant agreement. This is a new. This I is agree. A Definitely approved. This is the actual author authorizing of me to fund the agreement and send it back to the state. Okay. All right. I think so, we can do that. Let me just see how, what we should be saying then. 
We yeah. should be authorizing the town administrator to sign the, 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 the oh, yeah, right here. The grant. Yeah. Since we are comfortable with this agreement, I I make a motion that the select board authorize town administrator Jenkins to sign the agreement via oh via motion. My motion. We probably should wait till Carl gets out of the bathroom just to be polite. Well, we can discuss it. Yeah, there's not a second for it yet either. No, let's discuss it. Do you want to discuss it? Seth, I did include you on a reply to some inquiry about this particular grant because I was under the impression that it was kind of being handled by the energy committee, but yeah. now I was requested today for who on the who on the was going to be on the municipal team yeah. for this. So uh, we don't really have a lot of capacity. So I'm not sure. So nor do I have architectural drawings or a lot of the things that are being requested of this building. I, I thought the purpose of this grant was to get a, a consultant. To kind of yeah. dig through all this information, I did not realize requests would be coming into this office. So, just so you know, I I did I have requested some clarification on what the expectation is of my time because there isn't much of it. To, right. To so this is a four thousand dollar grant, and it's to like, help with what resilience? Where? That's yeah. I mean, I haven't even had time to read this grant in great detail because again, I was under the impression it was the energy committee right. grant, and I didn't know it was gonna. Do you want to make its way? Do you here, want to so. put it off, or should we just? No, I think we do it. I just I need to get some clarification. Yeah. What are we gonna do with the money? And I'm just well, and I'm more just I I specifically asked when this first was sent to me yeah. what my involvement would need to be. Yeah. Was told minimal. So yeah. now I'm a bit confused. Yeah, and these little grants sometimes can be as much of they're just as big a pain in the derriere as. The larger grants. <laughs> just not the work. same reporting. You got it's the same commitments. Well, let's get let's it. get the money. Let's get the grant approved. I mean, and then we'll try to deal with it appropriately. As far as the workload goes, and whoever's going to be administrating the grant, is that it. I mean, or what? What's the grant for, basically? That's what you're saying? Well, I'm just. Try, I, I specifically asked what my time commitment would be from this. Yeah. I thought it would be minimal. So that's right. the only piece I'm a bit confused on right now. Oh, it didn't only grant the scope of works right here. Subject matter. So this is something that that the Energy Resilience Committee could do, but the town will have to handle pay, paying for everything. That's fine. It's, it's, I'm not sure what we need to be involved in. Part of it is I don't have any information on this building. So when requests are coming to me about this building, I don't, I mean, I could probably dig and figure out. So it's relative. Pumps were installed. It's all, it's relative to this building. Correct. Oh, okay. So architectural plans do not have those. Wouldn't even know where to put my hand Darn on it. that. Um, so some of the information that's, you know, lighting plan. I don't, there's this, a lot of this just doesn't exist. So I thought that was kind of the point of this grant was to help hire someone to do this evaluation, not that we would be putting it together. I mean, do we, should we bother? No, mm -hmm. I think, I think we need to do this grant. I'm just trying to figure out, I'm just confused now on who's doing what with it. But that's a separate issue from approving the. Like I said before, a lot of work's already been done in this building. A lot. And it doesn't yeah. say anything, doesn't say specifically this building, does it? It's I, I don't see this it building in the town garage. That's what I'm thinking, the town garage. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be the easy one to do. Well, the easy one would be if we swing this money towards a new new building. That's what I'm saying. I know. Yeah. Could we do that? That's ideally what would be great. This is what would be these. Day. Then you have your architectural plans, you have your lighting plan, you have your heating plan, you have all that stuff. Yeah, I would say that, you know, you're going to have time to do this. I would say that this, that our maybe doing an, uh, an addendum to the to the work scope of work would be to specifically call out the um, the new town garage that we're planning to build and want to make it very energy resilient. Well, this is kind of the state's can language, yeah. but I think the energy committee I think could direct the effort. It's to any town building. Right. So okay. Well, that works. So I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm looking at the same thing you guys are looking at. I'm I'm looking at on um, page one of one attachment A that the scope of work 
Yeah. It says the grantee shall facilitate community meetings and communication about municipal energy resilience. So this is money to help them hold community gatherings and forums, you know, buy bagels and cream cheese and orange juice for, for those, create a web page, social media. Or to items. identify qualified local projects. Yeah. It could be the town garage at yeah. this place. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's safe. Well, it is. It's just kind of, you know what? It's like trying to lasso this thing and get it in so it's something manageable. Yeah. So Fourth out, you know, this could be just like, yeah, I'd go crazy in a meeting like that. <laughs> Because there's no, no, there's not no specificity, specificity, whatever it is. Never mind. Well, I think we should move on, and we're going to. Yeah, it's almost my bedtime. Well, it is, and we're not all the way through the agenda, so let's not beat this horse to death anymore. So, did we have a motion? Do we have a motion? I think we did. I think you made one. I did. You made a motion. Do we have a second? Sure. I second. Just made a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 What you're doing is approving the town administrator to sign the grant agreement. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to work out the details. Okay. I, I would say the ayes appear to have it, and they do. Okay. Um, Chicory Road. For this next item, Seth, you have the original document that was received oh, from Washington Electric. There's a tiny version in your packet, but you have the actual legal right size here. paper. Yeah. And that's the one that would be signed by the select board if you choose to approve this. All I want to do is put some poles in our road right away, so they have to have correct. That's it. Yeah, nice. correct. Yeah. Oh, well, that's that. just for a new house, actually. Rebecca Hill's future home. Wow. On Chickering Road. So they have to ask whether to put a poll in our right away. And I think that's okay. They usually put the polls close to the road so they can service them if there's a problem. And you just haven't seen one of these in a while. I think it was 2020, the last one I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been a while. I wasn't sure what to do with it. But we don't have many, many new houses being built. Um, you're going. No. Um, anybody have any questions? No. Like kind of know what it is. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. It's like what you just said. Okay. Good, um, good list. I'll great. make the motion. Okay. Scott made a motion. Who, who's going to make a second? I'll make the second. Joey makes a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have so it. So essentially, we approve the do I just sign this installation sign? of the polls in the town road right away on Chickering Road. It's kind of odd the way it reads. It says select men. But then it doesn't give that many lines. So yeah, I, the motion could theoretically Seth authorize you only to sign. I see it says it. sign here. I don't even see a place to sign. Yeah, well, so board of selectmen. Yeah. Okay. This is so old. This is your paperwork is so antiquated. My, my memory of the motion is that it included an authorization to the board or to the board chair to sign it. Everybody yeah, remember that, that? I remember it that way too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember it that way. Okay, sign. I am. So what's new? What else? Oh, Delta Dental. Okay. So this can be a very quick item. There's essentially no change in the well, my, we can make a long. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> time to get it going. That's like pulling teeth, sir. Okay. <laughs> next <laughs> item. Break yeah. yourself. Next <laughs> item. <laughs> I'm gonna impact with that. Now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Discussion on town employee Delta Dental plan. Mm. I'm I'm kicking off the agenda item in an official way. Okay. Okay. No change, right? There's essentially no change. Okay. Changing costs. Do we have to have a motion? No. No. It's just a FYI. Okay. okay. Thank you. We're happy with that. Appointments. CV Fiber Town Representative Alternate. So the gist here is I re have reached out to the previously appointed alternate yeah. numerous times asking. Who is that? Uh, Marshall Cottrell. Oh, to see if he would want to be reappointed and have not gotten a response. I asked Tom Fisher, who is our yeah. CB Fiber Town representative, yeah. if he had communicated with the alternate and he likewise had not gotten a response. Oh. So we took that as an assumption that bye he did bye. not want to be reappointed. And ironically enough, Nick Klosla, while attending one of our meet meetings, noticed the CV fiber on the agenda and said to me, if the position was open, he would be interested. Right. And as you have met Mr. Coastal in the past, he's on yeah. the planning commission, the DRB and actually has a background in broadband. So it, this is a topic that is near and dear to his heart. So good. 
I move to appoint Nick Kosla as a CV Fiber Governing Board Town Representative alternate. And I'll second that. <laughs> I was, gonna, I, was, I was gonna nominate Deirdre, but all of you favor, please say aye. 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 Rubber stamp. Yeah. Um Punch shirt. Yeah. We have warrants, but we also have a town administrator report. Oh, we wanted to talk about you want me to talk while you're looking at yeah. the warrant. The warrant's pretty simple. So for the town administrator report, I have an update on the US Route 2 trash issue that I brought to you previously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ryan McCall, who is, works with the state, did visit the property. Um, the person that was home would not exit the residence and actually speak with him directly. So I'm not sure if they spoke through the door. What I, I didn't get details on what their conversation right. was. Ryan was really there just to observe the property, and I sent him the pictures, and he was responding to take a look at what was going on. Okay. Um, he made sure he let me know that there was a very large aggressive dog on the property that he considered dangerous and cautioned me that if I do go to the property to not go alone. Bring a share. Um, and he likewise is not going to be going alone again either. Um, so essentially his first visit on May 31st was to just do an initial evaluation of the property. And he indicated that the property is definitely a solid, these are his words really, um, is definitely a solid waste problem, is messy, and is a violation of state regulations. So stay tuned for more from him, but it's at least a first step, I think, in mm -hmm. the right direction. Um, he's also going to be, or he said that on his initial visit, he didn't really see that it was enough to maybe declare a health emergency, but he said, of course, the town health officer um, can certainly decide that and that's true and we'll see what so then, to do. so right. the next bullet item there. is that jenny burley did officially resign yeah. um as the town health officer and chair gardner is now the town health right. officer yeah. so you can you have you're like the most powerful person in town <laughs> oh, besides the town clerk congratulations seth i'm really proud of you yeah thank you i'm, I'm really very happy to get be the public health officer of 15 <laughs> <laughs> well, you're so happy. So, so, that you can take at no cost to you. Oh, that's good. I'm, I'm thrilled. Um, so I could just go there and declare an emergency. Yeah, I'm not sure what that process is. But so you yeah. have to send them a letter telling them you're going to declare an emergency. They don't clean it up. And then you have a meeting with the town select board, who is the local health board. And then if they agree that there's an emergency, then they they, uh, they declare it. But I don't so, know what's going to happen there then. You have to end up going to court with them and everything. You have to go to court. Why don't you just go there to the uh, state police and clean it up? <laughs> the state police. Or the, well, or the sheriff's department. You need protection. You got a vicious dog. We, yeah. You drive the payload or in there and a couple trucks, you clean it up. But yeah. because it's a violation. And we would go in with the police and we would go in with the garbage guy. And the garbage guy would bring in the truck and we'd clean it up. And then we put it on our tax bill. But we don't have a policy about that. But I'm pretty sure that because it's in violation of state regulations, what they, I think they said that the state would work with the individuals until there's a resolution and oh. that they would be um, responsible for resolving the issue, I believe. Yeah, so what, what well, is the application of the state? Uh, okay. Yeah, he didn't. I mean, I think we can leave it in the hands of the state or take it into the town health officers. These are small potatoes for the state. They have a lot bigger environmental issues than that. Yeah. But the point is, he did. I remember he did say that, 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 that this is a violation, but you can also approach it from the health officer point of view. Right. Uh, if you want to, and there's clear statutes on that. Mm -hmm. you know, the on that. One thing for the state, I mean, he responded very quickly yeah. um, to go take a look at this when I did send him an email. So, I mean, he, you know. Can we throw them an email and say, would it be appropriate for us to declare it a town health? Well, they would probably health want health. you to do it. It'd be easier for you to do it than them. Well, why don't we just do that? Because it's not, you got to I'll just drive over, say it looks horrible, come back here, fill out the necessary forms, and move ahead and change our policy if we have to. <laughs> well, I'm just. Let's let us see. Okay, so what I'm wondering about is there's people that are complaining about this and they're saying that we're doing nothing. We are doing nothing. So we why don't we do we're something? We're contacting, we're asking the... the I know that, but it's kind of, if we just let the state take care of it, it's going to drag on for months. Well, well, in all fairness, though, 
for the people that are complaining that have been complaining for years about this, this just came to me. We've actually had action on this in a very short amount of time. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what was done in the past in I never heard anything about with it. these yeah. complaints. Yeah. That's yeah. my point. Yeah. So while I've heard that there have been complaints for years, clearly, yeah. honestly, yes, nothing was getting done, but yeah. we have taken some action since yeah. I sent a letter yeah. Yeah. based on you know yeah. the, the last meeting. I right. decided to reach out to the state, thanks to Zoe, who did contact the state and found out that yes, the state could help with this. And then Guthrie reminded me of this gentleman's name who I've spoken with previously, Ryan McCall. So I went directly to him knowing that he was with A&R. So we have, we have had activity in the very brief time since this yeah. complaint yes. has officially come yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I, I you know, I can't do and, anything and, about what did, was or not done in the past. But. So the person living in there is the owner or renter? No idea. We need to know. I think it's a renter from what we understand. And you can go through the rental codes, the state of Vermont rental codes, and you can declare health emergency and you can put pressure on the property owner to clean up the property. I think but, as town health officer, you have a you you do have a lot of power to respond to this. <laughs> How you go about doing that, mm -hmm. I don't know. There's a book on it. You have a form. Have he has a little certificate there that he received from the state. It's up here in the corner stuff. Right. It's, it uh, got oh, held in the mail. You'll yeah. get a little card so your name on it. So if you look next to it, you have a certificate that you can put on your wall as the second page that declares you as town health officer as of June 1st. Can I put a frame around it? So I was going to frame it for you, but I didn't get okay. it. Okay. Seth, Seth, you're Mr. Poop, you're Mr. Poop control, too. You got all these all these titles. You're Poop big. control. Oh, yeah. yeah. So... Okay, so, so there is a, there's very clear language, very good training at the towns on this. What's that? Oh, so wait, did you say something? Nope. Okay. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of really good training for town health officer. So I don't think we. I'm I'm not clear whether we're going towards a consensus. So. Uh, asking the town health officer to go in or, you know, letting it play out with the state for at least another meeting. I'd let it play state. out for the state for another meeting and then yeah. I have the town, then we can research that. Research what? Research the actions that a town health officer can do. And, yeah. and then what- Well, it seems like I should be doing that. Right, but you, you, there is a, there must be a book in this place somewhere that explains it all it's because it, says it, go online. it is online yeah. it is online that's it right says, I was, I, Vermont, I, Vermont, 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 blah 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 yeah. i was a health officer for eight years oh ah, okay but i'm not a health officer anymore <laughs> can can we uh, appoint you no no, no 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 okay. no no i did that i hated it when i was doing it yeah. so okay. well i can i'll take this home try to do something so i have some information about what we can do and then if the state doesn't do anything by the next meeting, then we need to pull the trigger on this aspect. Okay. So our next meeting is pretty quick. It's two weeks away. It's yeah. the 19th. So that's okay. I I, I volunteered to, to to put that to do that research. I mean, I did this for a long time. I mean, you have a form you go with and everything. You should go with a sheriff. Yeah. You really should. Yeah. yeah. Um the point is, um, I just don't have time. <laughs> I'm willing to communicate with the state more. I, I used to work in garbage, so it's, I guess, of <laughs> interest to me. So, Well, if you want to call the state to see what, what the status is of, you know, they looked at this site. I'm not quite clear if they want to do something or not. Is that fair? Well, yeah. it says in Gina's report uh, that Mr. McCall will readdress the scene in a week or so and re report his findings. So it sounds like he's going to go out there. And he said he wasn't yeah. going in without, without somebody character. with him. Yeah. And, well, and a health officer has a right to, to have a, a cop with him. When yeah. they and when I when I called the uh, environmental agency initially, I was told that if anyone makes a complaint, you know, citizen or otherwise, and something is found to be in violation of state regulations it would be their policy to follow it through until there's a resolution um for every instance that's so, just that's what i remember being told yeah. okay and just just a tip on working with police and something like this as an animal control officer i was faced with uh, a situation where a ups driver had been bitten 
by a dog yes. and the um, UPS had no success in having communication with the dog owner about that. They were very interested in the, the rabies status of the dog amongst other things. And um, they were trying to get the state police to go out there with them and, and investigate state police chronically understaffed were uh, not willing to do that with them. But when I called up as animal control officer, then I had a good conversation with the staff sergeant on duty at the time. And he ended up making a call to the house and say, hey, it's important for us to get that information. We got the information in a way that was documented. So they figured out a way to get what was needed without sending somebody out there. Yeah. And we, we have an agreement with the sheriff, so that's all I'm just thinking. It's yeah. Part of our yeah, we, no, I already thought of that. But, so, but, so the, you, the sheriff might not need to send somebody. I mean, that might be the solution, oh. but they may be able to handle it. And, and the point I was making is you don't, as a health officer, you don't have to go to a property without a, a, a sheriff with you. Mm -hmm. You can request one anytime. That's the power that a health officer has. And they shouldn't be going to these sites by themselves. I mean, you can, I mean, I did it often enough when I knew there was no danger involved, but you, but if there's, if there's like that one there, I'd have a sheriff with me. Of course, in where I came from, we had caught with the cops were in words anyway. So they went right. with me every, no, every it time. Sounds, it sounds to me like you are referencing the relationship between the health officer and the sheriff independent of any agreement that we have with the sheriff. Is that correct? Yeah. The health officer can re can have request. formal can request yeah. assistance from from an off, officer print statute. And are, are they obligated to provide it? Or I'm just wondering whether we'll be charged under agreement. I or, think I would pay them under the agreement because you're yeah. going to get them a lot more easily. Yeah. Okay. I never had a state to... statute. Maybe it has to be Vermont State Police, not. Oh, the sheriffs are usually the ones that do this kind of thing. But I thought so too. But my, but where I was, we took our own officers. Yeah. yeah but right. but it was easy for me, so I didn't have to deal with the state police. Yeah. Or the sheriffs. Yeah. I got a quick question. Um, it's not that hard to find out who owns a house, right? Because it's in. Oh yeah, I mean I. But we don't know who's living in it. But I but I don't believe that's who's living in it. Okay. That's who I, I addressed the letter to the owner yeah. and or current resident because and I we never got a response to the letter. No, they, yeah. they didn't. I assume they probably wouldn't pick up the certified letter. You get it back though. They haven't. It's at some point it'll come back. It'll sit though. I mean, they'll hold it at the post office for. So if if the observation can get the license plate number of the car there, then that may be a way to trace who's actually living there. And, right? and you also could have the letter delivered by the sheriff, mm -hmm. and you know it got there. Right. That's a good idea. Okay, so the other thing is that quick question: Do we have anybody interested in being the town health officer? I have a response from just about anyone for any open position that we have. You put it on. There you go. That'd be a great learning opportunity. <laughs> what about Nick Coastal? Not my field. <laughs> oh, oh my God! That's wow. a terrible way to introduce yourself to your neighbors. <laughs> so did we put that on uh, front porch one? Yeah. The health officer. Mm -hmm. It was in the last listing. At this point, I've been putting a list. Okay. We have the transportation advisory committee person open. We have positions that have been open now for a significant amount of time. Okay. All right. All right. So we're going to kick this back to Zoe. She's going to reach out to the state and see what action is being taken. I'll try to figure out what. I'll do a little research. Yeah. We'll do a little research about what we can do on our end. Yeah. To get this situation resolved. Yep. So that sounds to me a reasonable course of action. Not accusing us of being slow, though I am saying that we have residents that complain. I didn't know I didn't know they complained before. I think I was in a bottleneck somewhere. I, I, never, I never I've spoken to one and he came in one time and mentioned it to Rosie, said he had spoken, I think previously with Bruce. And Rosie, I wasn't in that day or yeah. somehow. And he said he would come back. And I don't believe that day he even left any contact information. And then he never came back until very recently. Yeah. So yeah. that was when I officially yeah. knew what was right. going on. Yeah. Well, so, okay. It is what it is. We'll just move forward. That's the best yeah. way to handle it. I know it fell into your lap, Seth, but thanks for handling this. Seriously, it's yeah, thank you. Not, not, a, not a fun job, but I appreciate oh, it. Anything. Thanks, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, oh God. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the next item is that I met with Paul Guerra and Albert Petrella on Friday to discuss uh, burn permits. I guess the way the process has been, given that our fire warden 
was the chief of the fire department had calls going directly to the fire department yep. for burn permits. Yep. The problem is per Paul and Albert is that the majority of the staff that are there on a regular basis are EMS trained staff. It's not necessarily your fire staff. So when these calls come in, they said they really don't have people that it's not the appropriate people to respond to these inquiries. So they requested that burn permit requests go directly to the fire warden However, the fire warden would like to receive those. So I uh, so I reached out to Ty and I emailed him back this, today to see if we could meet on Friday. So he and I are going to meet to discuss this process. Yeah, that the one thing to be aware of in that meeting is that under Ty, uh, the burn permits were issued after a site visit by the fire warden, mm -hmm. uh, which is not necessary according to law. Um, it seems like a, a good uh, high touch way to really educate people on what can be burned and when, when they're burning. Mm -hmm. And the way a lot of those visits have been conducted, driving an ambulance there. Fire because, truck. Or a fire truck. Uh, because um, you know, that way he had access to the emergency equipment if uh, an emergency cropped up while he was doing that. So if, yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. And I don't know how the logistics work now that he's not fire chief. I think they were using that. That was their, when they were writing down the number of calls, that was, they were calling on a call. Yeah, so well, we, we pushed back again. So right. yeah. it's like, wait a minute. Uh, yeah. That's a call. <laughs> so I don't think they were doing it as often. Uh, more recently, they haven't been. I mean, mm -hmm. his fires get all over the place. Mm -hmm. My neighbor has one on a slayer Friday night. <laughs> I think there's some problems that we're dealing with here. Anyway, but we're probably not getting to that. No. No. Okay. Hey, so what next? We have three zoning permits issued. What is a shed to enclose diesel exhaust? I thought it was with point, Casella. The point it of exhaust was to put it out in the air, not to enclose I it. I didn't print off the actual permit, but okay. it likely is on the website. Okay. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I loaded it already, okay. it'll be on the website. Okay. Yeah. Single family home and then deck. Okay. And then I have the upcoming schedule. Yeah. During the October dates, if anyone has an issue with those, then we'll no. continue readdressing the schedule. October, we return to, no, August, we return to our normal schedule first and third. And then no, there's a Monday then before August 10th. Oh, no, no, yeah. August 7th, 10th, and yeah. 21st. Yeah. We're already there. Oh, that's the East Montpelier Fire Department. The East Montpelier Fire Department's yeah. the 10th. Oh, yeah, that was my mistake. Okay. okay, and then the minutes issue that I mentioned, yeah. um, it uh, it occurred to me that um, the, the minutes that we've been getting are very accurate representations of the nuanced discussions that we have here. And there's history of the issues that um, that I used to incorporate, I think Bruce used to incorporate into the minutes and uh, did those by, a lot of it was just by, uh, if it did come up in the discussion, I took what was in the select board memo and modified that uh, a little bit, but did a lot of copying and pasting from that. And so I uh, talking to uh, Gina about um, ways to, um, include more efficiently. And uh, I thought we could just go ahead and when we post the minutes at the website, include as part of the same PDF, the select board memo for that meeting. And that way we won't be putting any extra work on Deidre to be recording anything more in the minutes and people reading them in the future would have access to, to more of the background. Does that seem reasonable to everyone? Seems reasonable to me. Yeah, as long as it's not more work for anybody. It's it's something yeah. that's already produced and it's yeah, yeah. putting it together. Right. So it's maybe one minute more work. Yeah, that'll work. Is it, does anybody care? I mean, does anybody read the minutes? Uh, uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I got a call. I got a call yeah. yesterday yeah. based on, on the minutes. People, yeah. people do. People oh, yeah. watch the videos. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Especially if they're interested on a topic, they'll go seek that information. Yeah. And yeah, it is true. There tends to be a lot of information in the memo. Yeah. Because it's, true. it's all there, it's yeah. not necessarily all said yeah. in the in the meeting, right. which is why it's appropriately, honestly, appropriately not included in the minutes. The minutes are supposed to be what was said in the meeting, exactly. you know. So 
it, it, it seems like a very efficient way to make sure that information is captured. All right. And it'll make it a little easier to find the memo. Yeah. Or annotated agenda. Yeah. And it'll also help people 10 years from now who's trying to figure out what the heck we were thinking when we made such and such decision. Yeah, there's a lot of work that goes into those annotated agendas. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. Sounds like a good plan. Okay. Is there anything else? Um, a motion to adjourn. That that seems appropriate. Or are you going more? No. Oh, I I'd like to make a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. That's what I mean. If you're making the official motion, I am. Second. I don't know if you're going to get a second on that. I saw the second, question. third, fourth, fifth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Uh, 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 I am.